The World of Warcraft Mount Farm World Tour is back again with episode number 5 and if you did miss the previous 4 episodes there will be a playlist link in the description down below. If you are newer to mount collecting I would recommend checking them out as that's a lot of mounts to add to your collection. In this episode we're going to be covering the plethora of mounts found in the beautiful continent of Pandaria but speaking of beautiful content this video is sponsored by Black Desert Online. Black Desert Online is a buy to play MMORPG with no monthly sub costs you just buy it once and you'll get all future updates for free and the game looks visually amazing it's one of the best looking MMOs and they somehow made it look better with the recent remastered version. The game also added its 19th class which is Guardians, kind of like a berserker lady with a axe and a shield, charging around, knocking things over, smashing the ground, rocks flying everywhere. It was actually a ton of fun, I jumped in and played a bit of it and you know, really enjoyed it. But if it's not your style, there are 18 other classes to choose from such as Ranger, Ninja, Wizard or Striker. But the combat is really fun, it's kind of like combo style. The game is a sandbox MMO so it's basically just a world you can get yourself lost into and immersed into. It's how you want to play basically if you want to focus on professions and trading or grinding mobs and combat it's up to you really and the game also has a really nice character creation there's a ton of customization available and you're probably going to spend hours on that alone so if the game sounds interesting there is a link to a seven day trial in the description below and i would recommend checking it out because you'll have a ton of content to do and it'll definitely fill the gap while we've not got a whole lot to do in wow until we wait for shadowlands our first stop is going to be the Isle of Giants, which we're going to find way north of Pandaria. Past Kun La, you'll find a little island on its own called the Isle of Giants. Now head out there, and even though this island's small, we're going to get quite a few mounts from it, so it's definitely worth your time. So once you head out there, the first thing you want to start doing is just murdering all of the dinosaurs in sight. Just run around the island, it's a nice kind of circle shape, so it's quite easy to navigate around. And just run around in a circle, killing any dinosaurs you see. Loot the dinosaurs as you go and you'll be getting these uh, bones from them. These bones are important because with 9,999 of them, you can hand them in for a bone white primal raptor guaranteed. So you'll want to gather as many bones as possible. Now it is also worth noting these bones can be bought and sold as well. So you could go and buy them off the auction house to save yourself some time, obviously at the expense of gold. Or alternatively, you could be the one selling them. You could grind out 9,999 and advertise that you're selling the white primal raptor and someone out there will probably pay a good amount of gold because they're saving time so it's up to you how you want to do it but either way you do need to get 9999 of them so once you've got your 9999 there'll be a cave on the left side of the island and inside there will be a troll called kuma and he'll have four quests for you the one called a mountain of giant dinosaur bones is the one that we want handing that in will give you the mount for the bones now, while you're grinding the bones from the dinosaurs, you'll also have a chance of getting a primal egg. I think it takes like three days to hatch. From the egg, you'll get a guaranteed mount. It might be a little bit longer than three days, but it, it doesn't matter. Either way, it takes a few days to hatch. And it will guaranteed hatch into either the black primal raptor, the green primal raptor, or the red primal raptor. But the primal egg is a unique item. So once you get one of them, you won't be able to get any more on that character until it hatches. So what I would recommend doing is going out and getting your primal egg, getting some bones, and once you're done with the primal egg, or once you've got one, bring in an alt to start farming the bones instead, and that way you're going to be stacking up multiple primal eggs across multiple characters, instead of them going to waste, and then those bones can be sent over to your main character, so you're just being a bit more efficient with it. But after a few days, the egg will hatch, and you'll get one of the three mounts. Now you can get duplicates, you could get three eggs, and all of them are the green primal raptor you could get unlucky or you could get lucky and it's all unique ones you'll just have to keep doing it until you do get all the eggs or all the mounts from the eggs the final mount we're going to be able to get from this place is the cobalt primal diahorn and that is going to come from the world boss who's sat in the middle of the isle of giants it spawns every i think it's 15 20 minutes and that is called undosta so you want to kill that and just from killing it you can kill it once per week per character you'll have a chance of getting the Cobalt Primal Diahorn. Now one thing to note, it's quite important actually, is that the world bosses of Pandaria, there's four of them, all these four world bosses can actually be bonus rolled for the chance at the mount. Now this is very unique, you can't do this with future expansion world bosses, it is very unique to just Pandaria. So what you'll want to do is get yourself the bonus roll currency. What I would recommend for that is heading over to a place called the Timeless Isle, which we'll talk about in more detail later on. But there's an area in the Timeless Isle off to the right hand side where you'll find these gulp frogs. 
kill the gulp frogs and you'll be getting two different types of currency these lesser coins of good fortune i think they're called and these time loss coins it takes a thousand time loss coins to get a mogu coin you'll need a mogu coin for undasta and nelak and then it takes 20 lesser charms to get a greater charm of good fortune and you'll need that for the shower of anger and for galleon so just keep farming the frogs you can buy the mogu coins from the timeless isle vendors kind of in the middle and you can buy the greater charms from town long steps and i'll have a map showing both of these places right now anyway so <laughs> don't have to explain too well but head out there once you've found a good amount of the timeless coins and the lesser charms and buy up to 20 coins per character of each and then use those on the world bosses and you're going to be getting two chances per character per week so it's really worth doing now that we're done on the isle of giants our next destination is going to be kunlai summit and our first stop there is going to be the mogushan terrace so get over there and you'll find the entrance to mogushan vaults from the fifth boss in mogushan vaults we'll be able to get or have a chance at least of getting the astral cloud serpent which is a really nice looking mount and this is on roughly a one percent drop chance now wowhead data does seem to believe that heroic 25 man and normal 25 man do have a slightly higher chance of dropping the mount data like that can be skewed though and generally these mounts are just one percent but there is no harm in running this on 25 man especially if you are a 120 character you'll have no problem doing it so if you want to believe the potentially higher chance then it is worth doing it on heroic 25. head inside and head to the first boss nothing you really need to know there the only thing you really need to know is just after the first boss there'll be these mogu statues and you need to run right on top of them to get them to aggro otherwise they'll never activate and then the same thing with the next five pack of these mobs then you can kill down the next boss and then you'll head into the next room where you'll fight a bunch of trolls you need to kill every single troll in this area to activate the boss then you'll move into the next section you'll be able to speak to cho cho will activate the next set of trash then you'll be able to kill the next boss and then you'll head into the lowest section where we'll finally meet elegon you'll have to kill out all the trash again speak to cho once more and then the boss elegon will activate and you'll be able to kill that as i said a rough one percent chance of getting the mount once you get yourself out of mogu shan vaults you want to fly over to one keg and just to the left of one keg we'll find kind of like a shower infested patch on the ground and this is where the world boss the shower of anger can spawn it's on about a 15 minute respawn timer for when it's killed and killing this world boss will give you roughly a 0.03% chance of getting the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent. This mount looks amazing, it's probably one of my favourite mounts in the game, and one that I don't have and not many people do. It's extremely rare as noted by the drop chance. It is worth noting though, like all the other world bosses in Pandaria, you can use a greater charm of good fortune to have an additional chance at the mount from Shara of Anger. It is on a one week lockout because it is a world boss so throw as many characters at it per week as possible with as many greater charms as good fortune just so you have as a best a chance of getting them out as possible because it is going to take a lot of attempts. I do also realise I didn't talk about the Undosta drop chance for the Cobalt Primal Diahorn. That is on about a roughly 0.08%. That's based on data so it could be closer to the Onyx Cloud Serpent but either way both are on an extremely low drop chance. Once you're done probably being disappointed by the Shower of Anger, this time we're going to head to the right of One Keg. And we're going to find this little village with yaks and stuff like that. And we'll find a vendor there called Uncle Big Pocket. And that vendor will sell us three yak mounts. Two of them are 3,000 gold each. And then you have the Grand Expedition Yak, which is going to cost 120,000 gold. Now the cool thing about this mount is it is a repair and also a transmog vendor. So it does have some functionality to it, but it is obviously quite pricey. But the two 3k gold yaks are easily purchasable. I mean, 3k gold isn't very much. And there's no prerequisites to be able to buy stuff from this vendor. You can just head out there, buy them up, and have more mounts in your collection. Before we leave Kunlai Summit, there is one last thing for us to do, and that is to check for the Zandalari War Bringers and the Zandalari War Scouts. The War Scouts will walk around a little bit, and killing those will give you a thousand reputation tokens. For some of the pandaria factions very very useful for later on in the video and the warbringers can also give those reputation tokens but they also have about a four to five percent chance of giving either a jade amber or slate diahorn now the mount that they can give is directly related to the mount that they're riding on so if the warbringer is on a slate diahorn then the only mount it can drop is a slate diahorn 
So do keep that in mind while looking. And you can find these Warbringers and War Scouts in Kunlai Summit, the Jade Forests, Krasarang Wilds, Red Wraiths, and Town Long Steps. So they're going to be all around Pandaria, so do keep that in mind while we're going through the video. There will be a map up now showing you the various spawn locations and the War Scout paths, roughly. So you will have to look around those areas. Now, I would recommend if you are farming these specifically, is to make some class trials on some really low populated RP realms, because there you're going to have way less competition on standard realms, and even better if you go into war mode. I can generally fly around those realms and get myself a few Warbringers or War Scouts. So, just a little tip there, just to help you out on those mobs specifically. The next stop on our world tour is going to be the Vale of the Eternal Blossoms, and the first thing up here is going to be the faction Golden Lotus. Once you get this faction to Exalted, you'll be able to purchase three crane mounts, and these mounts will cost you about 4,000 gold to buy them all, so it's not too bad. And they're okay mounts, I don't really particularly like them, but some people definitely do. So to get this started, you'll want to head to your main city in the Vale, and on the lower section, you'll find the Golden Lotus Quartermaster. Now this guy is useful for three reasons. First of all, he'll give you a quest that will breadcrumb into the daily quest for the Golden Lotus. They're not too bad reputation, but it's up to you if you really want to do them once we go through the other methods. He'll also sell you the mounts, which obviously is the main reason we want him. And the final reason is at Revered, he'll sell you an item that will double your reputation gains all the way to Exalted. So it's going to make Revered to Exalted a lot faster and 100% faster. You're going to be getting the double rep from there to Exalted. So definitely worth picking this up. And most of the factions have this item that you can buy. Some of the later ones introduced don't. But the vast majority of the Pandara factions do. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on the Quartermasters for the various factions. Just so you can speed up your reputation gains. So what we're going to do to get rep for this faction is one is the daily quests. Two is the Warbringers and the War Scouts giving you those 1000 rep tokens. The best method is the Mogu in the Veil. Vale. Killing those will give you about 20 rep a kill. 10, 20 rep, either way it's still a good amount. And there's a ton of them. You can be killing loads of them, running around the zone, murdering them all off. And killing them will also give you a chance of getting a key. That key can be taken into the Gaolai Halls, I think it is. And right at the back of the Gaolai Halls will be a bunch of chests that you can open. Once you open those chests, you have a chance of getting, I think it's 250 and 500 reputation tokens which can then be used to further increase your rep with the Golden Lotus. So the rep faction is probably one of the quickest ones to do in Pandaria. Bunch of methods to get rep, so it's really good. And the great thing about this is killing the Mogu in the Veil will also give you a chance of getting a Sky Shard. A Sky Shard is an item that can drop from any mob in the Veil, but once you get 10 of them, you'll be able to combine them together and kill Alani. Alani is a big red dragon flying around the zone. It does have a respawn timer. But once you kill that dragon, you'll be awarded with the Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent, which is a BOE mount, so you could sell it if you wanted to, but that's going to be another mount you can be getting. So you double dip in, which is really, really nice. Now, one thing to know, in 8.3, there's going to be new mobs that are in the Veil that are like level 120. So far on the PTR, these mobs drop Sky Shards. So that's going to mean Sky Shards are going to be a lot more common to get because more people are going to be in the zone again. And also, um, the price on the Thunder and Ruby Crowd Serpent might go down because of this. So, one thing to keep in mind if you are looking to buy one or you're looking to sell them. Next up in the Veil, we have the August Celestials faction. And getting that to Exalted will allow you to purchase the Thundering August Cloud Serpent. And like the Golden Lotus, once you hit Revered, you can buy an item that will double your reputation gains up to Exalted. So, that's good. But unfortunately, unlike the Golden Lotus, there isn't any mob like the Mogu that you can just grind over and over again for raw reputation. Now, you can still kill the Warbringers and the War Scouts for those 1000 rep tokens, so do keep that in mind as that's probably going to be your best bet of reputation outside of time walking. And unfortunately, time walking only comes around once in a blue moon, and I think by the time this video goes live, time walking would have just left, which is unfortunate. But we'll talk more about time walking later in the video. So your other method of gaining reputation is going to be through daily quests. So you'll want to head to your main hub in the Vale again, and in the lower section you'll find the August Celestials kind of quartermaster slash representative. It'll have a quest sending you to one of the temples, either the ox, the tiger, the crane, or the dragon. And you'll go and do daily quests there, and you'll get a chunk of reputation. Now if for whatever reason it isn't giving you a quest, there are still some kind of phasing issues with one of the quest lines. And that is for the Tiger Temple, the White Tiger. 
To fix that, what you'll want to do is go and quest at the temple in uh, Kunlai Summit. There's a quest chain up there that will unlock the temple fuller. And that should give you access to the dailies there too. So if you are experiencing that problem, that's probably what the issue is. Next in the veil is going to be the faction Law Walkers. And getting that to Exalted will give you the mount, the disc of the Red Flying Cloud. And getting this reputation to Exalted is quite unique. It does require you to go around multiple different zones. But it's different compared to a lot of reps. And honestly, I wish they'd do more stuff like this. So the way you get to Exalted is by finding these lore scrolls in the, the world in Pandaria and these will give you progression towards a bunch of different exploration achievements. Each achievement you complete, you'll get an item in the mail which will be a quest. That quest will send you to the top of Mogushan Palace in Vale and you'll hand that quest in for a chunk of reputation. Like Golden Lotus and August Celestials, there'll also be an item there from the Quartermaster in above Mogushan Palace that you can buy that will increase your reputation gains from revered to exalted so definitely worth picking that up as well just to make sure you do snugly get from revered to exalted and to make this a bit easier in the description below will be a link to an add-on called tom tom a link to an add-on called paste and then a big list of coordinates get those two add-ons installed log into the game open paste copy all of those coordinates plop them into paste and then click paste and close and what will happen is all of those coordinates will be added to TomTom. -tom. There'll be a bunch of dots on your map. And then you'll be able to use that map to basically find all the different lore scrolls. And do that while you're doing the other mounts in this guide. So definitely have that going so you know where they all are as you're progressing through the video. Now once you do get to Revered, you want to head back up. Or you could do them all and then head back to the Vale. It doesn't really matter because there are items that you'll hand in for rep. Head to the top of Mogusham Palace. Hand in the quests one at a time get your item that will increase your rep at revered and one thing that will speed things up a little bit is every time you hand in one of the quests run out of the room and that will stop the rp and then you can hand in the next quest and keep doing that until you get to exalted the final mount in the veil is going to be the corcoran juggernaut which has about a one percent chance of dropping from garish hellscream on mythic in siege of orgrimmar to get inside siege of orgrimmar you'll want to go just south of mogushan palace where the kind of corrupted well is head inside the raid there and just basically start clearing through the bosses. Now the second boss, if you kill it too quick, it will bug out and kind of break. So what I would recommend doing is slowly DPS in one down by about 30-40%. And then let it do its transition and then repeat that to the other two. And then repeat that on the first one and then to the other two again. And eventually you'll have them low enough that you can just kill them. They both have two sets of transitions. So you want to make sure you've gone through the six transitions before you kill the bosses. And you'll head through the next two or three bosses. There's nothing really too special to be said there. Galakraz, you just want to clear the tower, make sure the goblins or gnomes are protected, and then shoot down Galakraz with the one cannon. You don't need both. Shoot down Galakraz, and then you can move on to the next boss. Then you'll be on the Iron Juggernaut. Nothing special there. Same with the Shamans. Same with General Nazgrim. Same with Malkarok, I think he's called. Whatever his name is. Big, scary orc dude. And then you'll move on to this hall, where you'll go left or right. You want to take the right side, you'll head into Treasures of Pandaria, uh, you'll clear out all the boxes on one side, and then you'll click the lever, you'll head, use the hook, head over to the other side, clear out all the boxes again and the mobs inside them, click the lever again, and then you'll rinse and repeat that for the final two rooms. Same again, nothing to be said about Thark and Blackfuse, fairly straightforward fights. Paragons can bug out if you kill them too fast, so do slow down, let the three bugs land, like once you kill one, let it land and fully be around and then slowly DPS it down a little bit and repeat that until they've all landed and they're all dead. And then head on to Garrosh, which once again, fairly straightforward fight, nothing special to be said there. And then once you kill Garrosh, you'll have about a 1% chance of getting the mount. Now there is also the glory of the Siege of Orgrimmar Raid, which will give the spawn of Galakraz mount, but it's not so lowable, there's some achievements that are really annoying, so I'm not going to talk about that in much detail here, because most of this stuff is aimed at solo play. But if you are looking to do the meta achievements in a group, then it's worth checking out some achievement discords. And you could even also check out my discord. There's a link in the description below. Ask around and see if anyone's interested in getting a group going to do some of the old meta achievements. So that does bring us to an end of our Mr. Pandaria Mount Farm World Tour Part 1. I did want to do this in one big episode, but it'd be about 40-50 minutes long because there's just too many mounts in Pandaria. So I decided to cut it in half and do it that way. But I do want to thank Black Desert Online for sponsoring this video, as it's the first sponsor I've actually taken in my nine or so years of doing YouTube. That's a lot of videos. 
And the reasoning for that is it's not due to lack of offers, but more because this was a game I felt confident and comfortable promoting, as it's a game I've played and enjoyed in the past. So if you are interested in checking it out, definitely take a look at the link in the description down below. Outside of that, look out for part two coming pretty soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.